So, you know, one of the big struggles I, I see a lot of men have is knowing how to talk to women, you know, being comfortable around women and learning how to cultivate relationships with women in various different ways. And so what a lot of men are struggling with is social skills and how to position themselves or how to obtain uh, the qualities necessary to be successful in this area. Now, let me make something clear up front. I'm an introverted person. And by being introverted, I've never been really one to approach women, all right? So a lot of my meeting women have been through, by chance, you know, mutual connections. There have been those moments here and there that, you know, I was able to approach. But for the most part, I don't do it all the time like a lot of different dudes. So this video is not saying you got to go out there and start trying to talk to every and each woman that you see. However, one thing I can confidently say is I have no problem having conversations and being able to hold a conversation with a woman once we are engaging in, in discussion. So, and I'm, I'm comfortable around women completely. So my goal is just to get you where you are able and you are comfortable and you are confident. And I, the tips I have for you are going to be more about laying the foundation, not teaching you game, so to speak, right? More so, no, how to set yourself up so that you can win in this area. So the first tip on this list, and it might surprise you on how you can improve your social skills with women is getting healthy. So here's what I mean by that. I am a firm, I'm no doctor, but I'm a firm believer that one of the biggest problems or the most common problem that a lot of men are experiencing is low testosterone, okay? And with low testosterone, you aren't going to be as confident as you could be. You're not going to be as focused. You're not going to be as assertive. Um, it, it just has a very negative impact on you. You're not going to have the energy for it. You're just not going to care. You're not going to have the drive. All these different things cause a problem. Now, you, you can talk to any man who's either boosted his testosterone, whether that be naturally or through therapy, um, or, or even you, you hear stories of men doing semen retention and, and over time they, they find themselves more confident, attractive women, all these things. And I believe one of the reasons is because their testosterone is improving. All right. Now, testosterone is not the only aspect of health we need to focus on. It's just a huge aspect of it. And I believe that when we start doing the other things that can help boost it, well, it, it has all these positive effects on us. So, for example, if you're vitamin D deficient, right, that's one thing that's hurting your production of testosterone. So in boosting your testosterone through adding a vitamin D supplement or getting more sun, getting outside the house more, you will now get the benefits of improved vitamin D as well as now you have uh, improved testosterone. So there's a lot and there's a lot to get into. I'll do a separate video on that. Uh, in the meantime, do your research, look into it. Let me say this though. Again, I'm no doctor. Talk to people in the field. One thing I do not like is I'm seeing, I saw a commercial today on, it wasn't even a commercial, it was a TikTok. And it was this guy saying, if you have low T, you need to get T TRT therapy, to, testo testosterone replacement therapy, all right? Whereas you're getting the injections. And it's dudes like 20 years old talking about my testosterone is low, I'm gonna get the injection. It's like, yo, you're 20, you haven't even given yourself a chance to boost it naturally and you wanna go straight to injections. Now listen, that is your choice as an individual, but I'm gonna encourage you to go the natural route first, exhaust those options first, especially when you're that young. And then if all else fails, maybe you, know, you go the other route, but just throwing that out there. Either way, my whole point is by getting yourself to a healthier place, you be, it's easier to be more confident, to be more assertive, to carry yourself in a way that will be more attractive to women. All right. There's even, and again, I'm always throwing out stuff that I don't know if it's true. I'm just going to tell you what I heard. I had heard this other TikTok where they was like, TikTok has this, all kinds of information, where they said they ran a test where they had these men run on a treadmill sweat in their tank top, whatever, gave the tank top to a bunch of women afterwards, 
And they said the women, they asked women, which one based off the scent are you most attracted to? And it turned out the ones they were most attracted to had the highest, uh, the, the, the best immune system, basically. All right. Their immune system was above average or whatever the case may be. I'm not sure how they framed it, but it would basically said the dudes who were the healthiest end up being the ones that got picked as the most attractive through the scent of their sweat in the tank top. It's this crazy thing. But the point is, it shows you, if it is true, how important your health plays into your ability to not just talk to women, but attract women as well. All right, so now the second tip to improve your social skills with women is remove any expectations, all right? So here's what I mean by that. And remember, we're going really foundational with this. One of the reasons why people are, are so hurt by rejection, are so afraid to talk to people, you know, and, and struggle being around women is because they're hoping for something to come out of this, whether it be get her number, whether it be a chance to sleep with her, whether whatever, right? And then when they don't get that, they're, they're hurt, they're disappointed, they're devastated. And what, when you remove the, the expect, and, and there's nothing wrong with hoping for it, but what I'm saying is when you have the mindset of, I'm not expecting anything to come out of this other than an opportunity to speak to this woman, all right? So if you want to call that an expectation, okay, then maybe I'm a little bit contradicting myself there, but what I'm getting at is there is no expectation of a certain result. There is no expectation of winning. It's just more so, let me embrace the process. Let me just focus on living in the moment with this experience. And yes, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. But for a man who's trying to get better at it, you have to put yourself out there. You know what I'm saying? So I think that when we remove expectations, because I say the same thing to the women when it comes to going on dates. A lot of women... They, they get what I call dating fatigue, and it can happen to men too, because they go on these dates hoping for something to come out of this, and when it doesn't, they're disappointed and they don't want to do it anymore. But if they just went into it just looking to enjoy the experience of it, then they wouldn't walk away with such a negative feeling when things don't work out a certain way. So that's what I'm getting at here. It's just reprogramming your brain to where it's, it's okay, whatever happens, happens. You know what I'm saying? It's more of an effort mentality. And you're not, you're not stressed if it don't work. And if it do work, cool. Either way, you look at it, it's still a win because you still tried. You still got to speak to that person. You still got to get more, become more comfortable in certain environments. It's still a win. When you change the way you look at it, it's going to make it so much easier for you to become more social with women. Which perfectly brings me to number three. And the third thing to do if you want to improve your social skills with women is have a more positive mindset. So unfortunately, one of the dangers of the internet today and a lot of stuff, we'll just call it what it is, a lot of the information you're getting on YouTube is that it can create a lot of negative perceptions about women in general. And the unfortunate reality is that when you absorb, consume too much of that, those negative perceptions, you may not realize how you start to project that onto every woman, whether you know her or not. You make negative assumptions. You go in expecting negative results. You go in expecting an attitude or whatever the case may be. And so then what happens is you create more negative experiences by projecting negative expectations or pro projecting negative perceptions onto people. If you want to make things, e and, and, and not to mention, you make it harder for you to even want to bother. Like if, if all I think of is negative things when it comes to women and dating and relationships and all this stuff, well, it's easy for me as a man to be like, well, F it. Why even bother? This is a waste of my time. Let me go play my video game. Let me go watch this sport. Let me go do this. Let me go hang out with the guys. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? But when you start to have a more positive mindset, it gives you more motivation to want to engage. It gives you more motivation to be 
open to the possibilities. It allows you to create more positive moments because you have a more positive attitude. Not to mention, you become more enjoyable to speak to. Some of y'all don't realize that when you're even talking to a woman, you're exuding negative energy. It reminds me of a guy specifically, there was a men's event, I went to it, and there were some women there, and the men were mingling. There was this one dude, and he just carried so much negative energy with him. And you could tell he had a lot of negative perceptions of women. So what happens is, even when the woman's not a bad woman, if she does any little thing <laughs> that, that you don't like or that looks a certain kind of way that you can misinterpret, it's easy to now jump straight to the negative, straight to being insulting, straight to now ha giving her an ad unnecessary attitude. And then when she doesn't want to talk to you, you're like, oh, it's, it, she's the problem. Like, nah, bro, you were the problem. So this specific guy, he would be like that, but it was crazy because he, he, long story short, he went through a process of healing and that completely changed his life. His attitude is so different. His, his energy is so different and you can see he's having better results with women. It's crazy how quickly that can change because he's not bringing all that negativity to the situation. So bottom line is, you got to work on having a more positive mindset. There are good women out there. There are women that you can have good, great, healthy, positive interactions with. And if you are struggling to come in with a positive mindset, there's two things I want you to look at. What are you consuming that's feeding that beast? And have you healed from your past experiences? Listen, everyone needs to heal from what they've been through. As men, we have a tendency to where we go through things and we try to suck it up and keep it pushing. That's not healthy, all right? If you need help with healing, yo, get my book, Love After Heartbreak. You can click the link in the description or in the comment section, go to loveafterheartbreak.com. The book is for men and women. It will give you the steps to healing so you, you don't have to necessarily go to a therapist. If you just do what the book says, you'll be good. And I'm telling you, there's thousands of men who read that book, more than thousands. And they will tell you themselves how much it's helped them. So seriously consider it because you need that if you're going to start to make life better. Not just when it comes to women, but for you, your, just your overall quality of life for you personally. All right, so let's, let's continue this. And uh, the fourth thing that you can do, the fourth tip to improve your social skills with women is become well-versed in some different topics and subjects, all right? So what, what I've learned is that a lot of women complain about men's inability to hold a conversation. Now, I've heard some women, some men make the same complaint about women, and I'm not saying that it doesn't exist on both sides, but I have heard it a lot from women, and I think that for a lot of guys, the problem is because you're not educated in, in a certain subject, you don't have that thing that you can talk about, that you can share, that you can eat, that you're so good at it, you can teach. Because women admire a man they can learn something from, a man who can teach them something, okay? So you want to find something that you are passionate about that you can become well-versed in. One, it will help you build your confidence. It will help you feel like I have that, that one thing or those two topics that I can always go to that people love to hear about, all right? And, and again, they, they become more fascinated de depending on how, how wise you are in that area. I mean, of course, there's certain things that no matter what, people don't really care for, but for the most part, I think it's still good for you as a man to find something, all right, that you can be well-educated on. Anyways, the point is, it's, it's extremely helpful in discussion. It's extremely helpful in building your confidence as a man, um, as well as in the process of becoming well-educated in this area. Well, it also, it, it can help you with your vocabulary. It can help you with your uh, communication skills just in the way that you learn how to communicate certain things and explain and then break down certain aspects of that topic that you've learned. So it's just very, very helpful. So that's why I'm, I'm a big believer in men reading books. And even if you don't want to read books, man, like 
There's so many videos on YouTube where you can learn about certain subjects and become better educated about it. You can get audio books now. There are ways to obtain more information. Take advantage of that, you know what I'm saying? And just start to learn. And I'm telling you, it's gonna be helpful in a lot of ways. All right, so now the fifth tip, and this one may be a little controversial. <clears throat> well, maybe controversial is over-exaggerated, but some people may take issue with it. And the fifth tip for building your social skills with women, in my opinion, professional opinion, is be open to having female friends, okay? And let me explain why. So there's a lot of people on the internet who will say, you don't need to have female friends. There's no point in that. Don't take advice from women, blah, 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 okay? I do, I do acknowledge that there are certain things you have to be mindful of when having female friends, and there are certain types of advices you have to be mindful of, of taking from a woman, and I'll explain in a second. But let me start with the fact that I think it can be very beneficial to have women that you are friends with, platonic friendships with, because one, it can help you become more comfortable around women in general. I'm not saying it's, the, it's automatically does it because there are men who have uh, female friends and they still struggle around women, but I do think it can help, all right? I also believe that it's very helpful because when, if you're trying to attract women, women can give you some great insight when it comes to maybe the style that fits you. So for example, you, you dress a certain kind of way, and I'm gonna make a different video for this, but it's not that I want you to completely change your style to be something that you're not, but sometimes little small changes that women pick up on, because women are very detailed, and they can tell you, hey, listen, why don't you try this? This would look good on you. And I'll tell you what, from my experience, any time I bought a piece of clothing or bought a cologne and it started with a woman saying, that would look good on you or that smells good on you, it's always worked. <laughs> like every time I would get, then I remember one time I went to the mall, I was there with a friend. She was like, yo, this would look, trust me, trust me. I was hesitant. I did it. Yo, I got so many compliments in that outfit. So I do think there can be a huge benefit in their insight because they're looking at it from the, the lens of a woman, all right? Whereas your homeboy, he, he can't see it the exact same way. But here is where I think you can be, you should be mindful of getting the woman's advice. So I do think they can give you good advice as far as what looks good on you, what smells good on you. I think they can help you with critiquing you as far as if you do struggle with your social skills, what areas you can improve on, things like that. I do think it can be beneficial. But let's just say, for example, you have a woman who's your friend and you've taken interest in a new woman and you're dating her and now you're going back to your female friend and asking for advice on how to handle the situation. This is where it gets tricky, okay? Now, I have a lot of women who are my friends. I love them all, all right? And this is no shade to my friends, okay? But, yo, like, I know that, and I'm not saying Dave specifically done this, but I've seen scenarios where, let's just say, for example, your, your female friend actually likes you. So now you're asking her about this other girl, and what you don't know is that she's letting that like get in the way and basically sabotage your situation. Sometimes it may not even be that she likes you. It might just be that she, her perception of the type of girl you should be with does not align with the type of girl you truly want in your life and you would be happy with. So you bring her this woman and because it doesn't meet her standard, she will be, no, she's not good enough. She will, you know, sabotage that situation. I've seen that happen. Um, also, a lot of women, not all, sometimes struggle to give advice without interjecting themselves. So it's like they're putting themselves in the situation rather than looking at it from the outside looking in. And that creates a bias. So it's like, yo, if, if, if she wouldn't have liked a certain thing, then she's going to answer from that perspective rather than considering, but what does that woman you're dealing with like or, do or doesn't like? Okay. Now, again, 
is not to say there aren't women out there who are capable of giving solid, unbiased advice, but you are playing a risky game. I've seen a lot of trouble start from that. So that's where I think you can be mindful of it. But in general, I do think having some female friends would be good for you. All right. So I think be open to it at the very least. So before I wrap this up, let me say this, because my, my photographer made a good point. You know, if you're in a relationship, well, some of you are, it's going to be, it's going to create an uncomfortable dynamic trying to have friendships while in a relationship. And I think that, you know, I was speaking about it from the perspective of you're a single man. And I think while you're single, it's good to establish these friendships. But I do think that, yes, you have to be mindful of that. Once you get into a committed relationship, boundaries have to be set with your friends. All right. And you have to make sure, and this is why it's important that if they're really your friends, then these are women who can be cool with the woman that you're serious about and would be happy about the woman that you're now serious about. If they're hating on the situation when there's no reason to hate on it, well, that's a sign of other problems and other issues that exist there. So I understand that it can get tricky in some cases. Um, but I do think, again, I think from simply the, the aspect of how can this help you as a man with your growth and specifically with your social skills, I do think it can be a very good benefit. Now, in close, I just want to say this. At the end of the day, it's all about you finding your confidence. All right. And you all these things I mentioned are foundational things that I believe can help you work towards being a more confident man. But if you know there's something else that's hindering you from feeling confident, address that and work on that, all right? Because when you can get that blockage out the way, you can set yourself up to now be much more free and walk more in your masculine energy and therefore experience better uh, situations and relationships with women and just again set you up for a better life overall hey thank you for watching this video be sure to check this one out right here and i'll see you there listen women love masculine energy plain and simple no way around it they they, they not just love it they crave it they yearn for it they are attracted to it